well, the coronavirus story continues to unfold uh, in a very predictable way. Uh, we've now reached the point where Donald Trump, the US president, has um, announced a ban on flights between America and um, European countries, not including the UK, uh, for the next 30 days. And um, very um, extreme measures are being taken in Italy, where um, they have uh, what seems to me to be um, a more virulent strain of this coronavirus, this COVID-19, um, than um, many other parts of the world. Um, I'll get into that as we go along. But of course, it's so predictable and was from the start that it was going to be a frenzy of draconian measures unfolding step by step. Now, people might say, and it's completely understandable, well, what else can they do? Well, there might be some truth in that. Yes, um, you know, if this is um, a virulent virus um, and it doesn't seem to be um, the same, like I've just said, um, everywhere, then measures need to be taken to deal with it. Yes. The point is, though, that those draconian measures are justified by governments because of the virus. And so um, anyone looking dispassionately at this needs to ask the question, who benefits from this virus appearing and breaking out? And it's anyone that wants to introduce draconian measures. And as with um, all of these things, when you when they introduce um, more authoritarian um, systems to respond to a situation, whatever it is, what tends to happen is when that situation is dying down, and disappearing, that not all of the measures introduced also get rolled back to how they were before. So there's a movement, there's a draconian, a tyrannical movement forward as a result of the situation, in this case, a virus. Um, and I can see um, many things coming, including um, technological testing for people ongoing. Oh, we, we need to introduce this now as a matter of course. And um, more and more freedom gets deleted. So it's not uh, a, a, a kind of a, a debate primarily on, okay, we need to do this because of the virus. The focus, I feel, should be on, well, all roads in terms of more authoritarian um, imposition lead back to the virus. And so where did the virus come from? And we can't say for certain um, about that. Um, I think there's a very good chance that different strains of the virus are actually being released in different places. Um, and that not all of it is coming out of China. Um, and we come back to this simple question, who benefits? And it's, a, it's an ancient concept, which I think goes back at least to ancient Rome, of he who benefits from a crime 
is the one most likely to have committed it. Uh, so he who benefits from the virus is the one most likely to have released it. And I would say we need to go beyond uh, China or America or Israel or any of these places in terms of it's the um, it's the Communist Party in China that released this. It's the who released this, etc. Because um, when you see the world as it is really directed and manipulated, it's a global web run by a global cult, as I call it, which has multiple faces in country after country after country. This cult absolutely controls China. China is its blueprint for the world. And um, it, it also controls the government of America, of Britain, uh, etc. Um, not by just having its 100% um, agents as prime ministers and ministers. The vast majority of those people won't even know there's a cult. It's in manipulating situations which people in government who are ignorant of the background and the forces that are driving the direction of the world will then respond to the situations you create in ways that change society in the ways that you want. And of course, in there, among the ignorant, uh, will be agents of this cult, not least in areas of permanent government, like government administration uh, uh, and uh, so on, rather than here today, gone tomorrow politicians, although there are, they will be involved as well. But the, the number compared with the totality of politicians will be tiny who are in full knowledge. You've only, you've only got to watch a debate in the Houses of uh, Parliament or on Capitol Hill to see um, the ignorance, but there will be people in there who absolutely know what's going on and um, support it. Either way, the problems that are created by this cult and its agents um, are then there to be responded to. And we're seeing the response now, incredibly predictable, to this virus, which absolutely so, uh, um, suits the um, ambitions of this cult to push the world further and further and further into a global Orwellian fascistic state under the name technocracy. Um, we are past the point where we're looking at the imposition of classic fascism or the imposition of classic um, Marxism, communism, uh, be, although the, the, the outcome for the people is the same, we moved it on into this technocracy, which was the plan all along. And a technocracy is a society that is run and controlled by, quote, experts and scientists and engineers and bureaucrats. I mean, the European Union is a classic technocracy in terms of its bureaucratic control by unelected people. And the target is democracy itself, because a technocracy does not do elected people. It does appointed people to run the system as they see fit or as that in the shadows sees fit via them. And so democracy has to go. And what we're seeing um, more and more are attacks on democracy 
And it's it's very easy to discredit the um, the concept of elected government when you just ensure that your system keeps turning out corrupt and clueless politicians. Because by definition, if you put those in charge, they are going to make a pig's ear of it. I don't know where, why, why that is a metaphor, but it is pig's ear or chaos and incompetence. But anyway, the, um, the whole um, thrust is destruction of democracy. And what you're seeing are surveys coming out, sometimes big surveys around the world, um, by the usual suspects, saying that the population is losing confidence in democracy, which is exactly where this needs to go. Now, if you if you play this out in terms of the coronavirus, uh, you have um, seen the uh, reaction eventually of the Chinese technocracy, because that's what it is already. That's why it's a blueprint for the world. Um, in terms of extreme measures, of lockdown, of pulling people off the streets, of pulling people out of their homes, and so much more. I'll come to some of it in a second. Um, and then you've got the democratic world, which um, has not yet responded in that extreme way, though we're starting to move that way in Italy, but um, and, and uh, Iran to an extent as well. And those two countries are significant no come to that. And uh, and you can see a scenario of psychological manipulation in which China dealt with the virus quote successfully, if that's how it turns out, and they're claiming it is at the moment. Um, because of these authoritarian extremes, whereas it, it, it wasn't sorted out in the West because of democratic freedom um, uh, concepts and responses. Um, and if this virus goes on expanding, uh, and of course the, 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 the hyping of the fear of the virus alongside it, then of course you're going to see support more and more or a suspension of democracy to meet the problem of the virus. So you, you can see this this whole attack on democracy taking a, uh, a step forward as a result of this um, virus, which I do not believe for one second occurred naturally. So if we go to um, if we go to this first story about uh, China, it says surprise: China is using COVID nineteen to strengthen its mass surveillance of citizens. Well, that was always going to happen. Uh, I mentioned it in a video I did with um, with Gareth what two weeks ago now that this is how it works, and. Um, of course, following on from that more and more step by step, the West is going to follow. We're already seeing it. So this story says, um, and, and like I say, you know, if, if, there, if this virus is, is circulating and it is uh, um, as dangerous as they claim, then, of course, measures need to be taken to, to mitigate that. Of course, but I come back to it. Those measures become justifiable by government because of the virus. So where did the virus come from? That's the key. So this story says, um, as a result of monitoring the 
or coronavirus. The Chinese government is now requiring Chinese citizens to provide personal data, including travel and health conditions, via apps on their smartphone to the government. This is the emerging smart grid control system, which is very much more advanced in China. Based on the answers that citizens give to the apps provided um, by these organizations, um, algorithms will try to decide whether or not the person is likely to have coronavirus. So you see that more power all the time is being given to artificial intelligence, which is, I've said for so long, is designed to be the control system of the world. The apps then assign a red, yellow or green code to the person, depending on their risk of having the virus. If you get a red code, you have to self-quarantine or be quarantined in a facility for 14 days. And citizens can't lie because all the answers they provide about things like hotel stays and travel are cross-checked by AI with the government's data and smartphone location data. Several provinces also have social credit systems uh, where people who lie, as well as smoke, jaywalk, and uh, do anything the government doesn't want them to do, um, lowers their social credit scores, uh, for which there are consequences. Like millions of Chinese people have been banned from flying and banned from uh, train travel um, because their credit score uh, has, um, has fallen. Their social credit score is fallen. Um, so the story goes on. It all rounds out a picture of Beijing increasing its mass surveillance over its citizens. The surveillance can be effective, as China has supposedly shown during the outbreak, but people must also consider how the surveillance can be weaponized to combat mass protests and individual pursuits of justice. Well, of course, one of the things that's happening is that gatherings of people are being banned in um, in more and more um, countries. And the uh, story continues, the technology based anti outbreak measures are certainly needed now, it says. They have allowed over 10 million people um, to um, assess their risk of uh, the coronavirus in uh, this Chinese province he's talking about. The technology being used is um, in over 200 cities and uh, in Shanghai, an app is monitoring 2, uh, uh, 245,000 street front shops with data, which eliminates the need for staff to visit them. The technology will help in indicating where the outbreak slows uh, for certain but there is little transparency, it says, on how Beijing collects the data and what happens to it. One low level official um, said, uh, through data analysis, we have mastered the trajectory of everyone's whereabouts. If you have not reported truthfully, our system will find out. So again, we're back to this question, who benefits? Well, just looking at that, situation in China, who benefits is blatantly pretty obvious. And it's playing out now across the world outside China, step by step. Uh, and um, you're going to hear people saying, officialdom saying, critics saying, oh, if only we'd have dealt with it like China did, which all is part of this psychological game that's, um, that's happening. So the more that this um, coronavirus situation unfolds, the more and more painfully obvious it is that this virus did not happen naturally, but has been um, created and circulated for reasons of justifying more and more control, which, which when eventually the virus is, um, uh, starts to fade in its impact, many of these measures will not be rolled back. 